wondering if you should invest in Wu Zetian? In this video, we'll break down what we think of her in 2020 and beyond, leaning from our experience from our main account, which is over 125 million power. We just unlocked her on my restart project, and we might just drop some sculptures into her. Stick around for a full breakdown as to whether or not this is a good commander for your legendary commander sculptures. We just completed our second season of KVK on our restart project, 45 million power, and we unlocked Wu Zetian. And as I looked at my old Wu Zetian guide, which is over a year old at this point, Oh my goodness, is there some out-of-date information in there? So I wanted to go in and do an updated guide giving you everything you need to know about how well Wu Zetian will last as a commander investment in Rise of Kingdoms. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We are a sponsored content creator and we've got guides about literally every legendary in the game. We're going to put timestamps in the description of this video so you can jump to whatever part you'd like. First, we're going to talk about Wu Zetian's viability in 2020 and beyond. Then we're going to break down a little bit of what you need to know about her skills, some optimal talents, how you unlock her, and last but not least is the pairings that we would recommend to you moving forward in Rise of Kingdoms. All right, we're now on our main account in Kingdom 75, and there's a lot to talk about with Wu Zetian. In my original video, I thought for sure I was going to invest in this commander because she was one of the very best in the game at the time, the best, for defending your city. Since then, some new commanders have landed that I have invested in that are really quite exceptional for defending your city. And so Wu Zetian's unique role as the best city defender in the game is somewhat diminished by the addition of YSS, who also gives a bunch of stats to all troop types as well as Theodora, who also gives a bunch of stats to all troop types. These commanders are way above average for defending your city, and Wu Zetian is no exception. She gives a generic amount of health boost, defense boost, and more, and that is unbelievably good when you have every single type of troop represented in your city. In that way, Wu Zetian is still one of the top tier city garrisons, but is she good for defending flags? Now, in order to answer that question for you, I need to pull up the Mightiest Governor breakdown of the exact order and timing of when these commanders are going to arrive. Thanks again to Stormy for putting together this diagram. When we talk about how well Wu Zetian performs, we need to look at what time period you're in in Rise of Kingdoms and what commanders are available to you at the time. Now, at the conclusion of our KVK Season 2, we are still on Constantine Alexander the Great for the Mightiest Governor and Wheel combination. In the next Mightiest Governor, Edward and Tamaris will become available. And against that combination, yeah, Wu Zetian is really solid as a commander that you bring to that. So I do like Wu Zetian for the time immediately following when you unlock her in KVK Season 2, both for Kingdom Warfare and also in Ark of Osiris. And in Ark of Osiris, she's going to hold a valuable role for a very long time. In fact, I'll add, as I watch this in hindsight and edit the video, that you can pair Wu Zetian with Song and stuff them into any rally you want. You could even put them into, let's say, an Attila Takeda rally. And when you take a structure in Ark of Osiris, you swap to the Wu zetian Song combo to defend the structure. And although I don't generally love Wu Zetian and Song, that is a really great way to get a phenomenal garrison pair into the structure, which will probably do better than a lot of the other things you were rallying with. Some people would insist that, no, you just keep using the Attila Takeda, but the second someone else tries to reinforce that structure with something other than cavalry, you have problems. So I like the idea of using Wu Zetian with a commander like Yi Song in Ark of Osiris to fill rallies especially, and that role, regardless of when you are in this timeline, works really well for a really long time. In addition, with the release of Attila and Takeda, Wu Zetian will start to lose some of her value as you lean back on heavy infantry metas. If the opponent does decide to bring something other than a Attila Takeda, or if they are multi-rallying you, you might consider flipping back over to a Wu Zetian. Since she's got some really nice anti-swarm technology in the fourth skill, 
and we'll talk a little bit more about how these skills work in just a moment. The last thing I'll say about Wu Zetian's viability moving forward into the game is that once you get to the period in which archers become meta again, that's Artemisia and Ramses toward the bottom of this diagram, at that moment in time, Wu Zetian paired with Artemisia is one of the better ways that you can go and address Attila Takeda. It works very well and is a good way to mobilize your archers. With the addition of YSS and Theodora, you'll now have yet another really great way to deal with Attila and Takeda. In fact, we used Wu Zetian with Theodora using full siege units to counter Attila Takeda in our previous season of KVK. That's KVK season five. So yeah, Wu Zetian is going to have a lot of viability into the game. And of course, new garrison commanders enter all the time. We are still determining if Zenobia will be an interesting pair with Wu Zetian as well. Now, if all of that sounded like a bit of an overload of information, I'll say it more simply. Wu Zetian is going to hold value for you in the long term because she is flexible in who you compare her with. Because she isn't committed to any one troop type, that means she generally doesn't have quite as many stats that you might normally expect to see on a commander that they bring to the table. But the upside of that is you compare her with literally just about anybody. And that works really well for longevity. Now, if you're considering whether or not you should invest in this commander, I just want to take a moment to point out that she is a garrison commander only. You can't use her in the open field. So if you are going to invest in a Wu Zetian, Keep in mind that this is a commander that has really just like one use only. And for players that are low spend or free to play, I generally advise you to go in a direction of picking commanders that are good for many things, like our friend YSG. Good in the field, good in the garrison, good in a rally, good in canyon, good at just about everything. Or Alexander the Great, good in the field, good in a rally, good in canyon, you get the idea. So Wu Zetian is not for everyone if what you want to do is pick the legendaries that you'll be able to use in the most places. But if you're going all in on a garrison commander, Wu Zetian is tough to beat. So with that said, what actually makes Wu Zetian powerful? If we get a quick look at her skills, her first skill is actually fairly underwhelming. A direct damage factor of 1,000 and a healing factor of 500. 1,500 combined factor is not all that much. If we could compare to Khan, Khan is going to have 1,700 factor. And so I don't love the active skill on Wu Zetian. I'm also not a huge fan of healing because there's a lot of ways to counter that. So really it is the rest of her skills that are going to make up for that. The second skill makes it so that when you are commanding a garrison, that's a flag, holy site, or your own city, all of the troops are going to deal 10% more damage and your damage to rallied armies is going to be up by 10%. That's 20% total more damage to rallied armies, which is really very good. The next skill is going to make it so that you get 10% defense, 10% health, and you have a chance to silence the target for two seconds, preventing them from using their active skill. That is very powerful. It's effectively rage denial. They're going to sit there with their rage bar full if the timing is right, and it is just chance that that happens. But they're going to sit there with their rage bar full, unable to use their skill, and that is basically denying them rage and preventing them from getting the benefit of those active skills for either one or two turns. The fourth skill is making it so that all skill damage you take is reduced by 15%, and every time you take skill damage, there is a 50% chance to boost your defense by 20% for three seconds. Wu Zetian is very much an anti-skill damage commander. Keep that in mind because the meta will be dominated for a long, long time by Attila and Takeda, and all they're doing is non-skill damage. If we look at Brightest Sky, troops led by this commander will deal 20% increased counterattack damage and have a 10% chance when attacked to deal 500 damage factor to the enemy. This is very good if you're getting swarmed. This is also very good in Arc of Osiris, even if you're defending against an Attila and Takeda rally. The reason that it is good is that, look, although Attila and Takeda in the rally are not going to do skill damage to you, you're going to probably get swarmed in that garrison as well, and that will proc the defense bonus, which will work against Attila and Takeda. So Wu Zetian is very exceptional in Ark of Osiris and in a number of garrison contexts, especially multi-rallies because of those skills. Now, looking in at the talents, 
She's got the support tree, the garrison tree, and the leadership tree. And there's really a couple things I want to highlight for you in terms of builds and then give you some options that you can play with, some things that you can choose. The things that I think are not optional when Wu Zetian are getting Rejuvenate, 150 Rage every time you use an active skill. That's on the primary and secondary commander. I think it is not optional to get Hidden Wrath. It grants you six Rage every time your troops are attacked. So if you have more things hitting you, you generate more rage. Really, really good in Ark of Osiris. If you are defending your city, then you're going to want every one of the points over here. Nowhere to turn, impenetrable fortifications, as well as impregnable, which requires you to get empty fortress stratagem along the way. Those are all very much required talents. Now, if you're defending something other than your city, you've got some really interesting options. There are also things you can consider if you're defending against Attila and Takeda or not. If you're an Ark of Osiris and you're going to get swarmed, I think Know Thy Enemy is amazing. It reduces the damage taken by 9%, which is very, very good. And yes, we've tested this. I'll have a card up in the top that you can watch at the end of the video if you want to see how that works. I also really like King's Guard. 3% of stats for all stats that's attack, defense, and health for three points. That is really good. And yeah, you got to get some less than impressive talents along the way, but it's really good. So I like this a lot as well for defending basically anything except a city. If you're not defending your city, don't get nowhere to turn because this only applies to your city. If you're battling against Attila and Takeda, then you don't want loose formation, reducing the skill damage you take or impregnable, which again is reducing the skill damage you take. You're fighting against anything else. Oh yeah, baby. You get that and you also get emergency protection. This is going to give you a really solid boost here. It's an additional 15% skill damage reduction for the next three seconds after you take skill damage. Crucial if you're getting swarmed in Ark of Osiris. And yes, I recognize you're kind of limited on talent points. There's so many, so many, only so many things you can do here. So you're going to have to make some choices. Last but not least, in the leadership tree, I really like strategic prowess. Every time you use an active skill that's on the primary and the secondary, you're getting 20% defense, and because you generate tons of rage from Rejuvenate and Burning Blood and Hidden Wrath, I think that's really solid. I also think that if you're going to bring mixed troops, and this is definitely the case if you're in your city, Armed to the Teeth is really good when you have three different troop types in the Wu Zetian March, then all damage dealt is increased by 3%. That's actually, for three points, really quite good. I'll flash a few completed builds up onto the screen just so you can get a sense here. I'll include an anti-Attila Takeda garrison build. I'll include a build for defending structures in Ark of Osiris. And I'll include a build for defending your city under the assumption that you're either getting multi-rallied or you don't know what kind of rally it's going to be. Maybe it's Attila Takeda, maybe it isn't. And so this is a pretty versatile build. Now, with regard to unlocking this commander, if you are so fortunate as to win in your KVK Season 2 by taking out an enemy Crusader Fortress or by owning the Zig at the end of the KVK, then you unlock Wu Zetian and you get some sculptures for her. If you don't finish KVK 2 as a victor and like, look, at least 50% of players generally don't, then what you can do is get her later from Card King if you really want her. And honestly, by that point in time that she shows up in Card King for you, you might be thinking about other things anyways. I swore up and down in my last video that this was a commander I would expertise, and here we are. I've expertised like, I don't know, 24 legendaries at this point, and I've got 1,400 plus sculptures on hand. And I'm not planning to expertise her now, so I think she's good. She's on my short list of commanders I'm very interested in. But by the time you get her from Card King, you may not feel that you need her in the same way that you did previously, especially with YSS and Theodora on the horizon for you. Now, with regard to pairings, and this is one of my favorite things to talk about, there are some pairings I thought would be really good, and I don't think they actually are. And there are some pairings that turned out to be really amazing that I didn't expect. On the list of pairings that I don't think are very good includes Esong with Wu Zetian and also includes Richard I with Wu Zetian. I would have thought that like rapid firing the healing and Ark of Osiris is really good. But the problem with 
overloading the healing that you're doing, in Ark of Osiris especially, is that there's too many counters to that at this point. Also, the E Song, like, yes, you do a lot of AoE damage, but in Ark, that's not what you're trying to do. And as a garrison outside of Ark, I was actually pretty unimpressed with the E Song Wu Zetian combo. I think you can use it and it's fine as like a backup pair you swap to if you have the opportunity to have AoE hit targets that are near the Wu Zetian. But you know, there's other ways that you can accomplish that. Now, a pairing that has actually worked out pretty well is Charles Martel with Wu Zetian. This is in part because the Charles Martel is not healing, he is shielding. And that is, in fact, a different effect that is not impacted by all the folks that are reducing healing effectiveness. But if you're going to put a Charles Martel in a garrison, you may as well pair it with a Constantine and you'll probably get a better result. So I don't think you need to go all in on the Wu Zetian if what you wanted to do was pair with a Charles Martel. So I've just ruled out a large amount of garrison commanders. Where is Wu Zetian best? In my opinion, Wu Zetian with YSS over here, Wu Zetian with Theodora, who I have here, and also Wu Zetian with Artemisia are really phenomenal pairings that do very, very well, all of them against Attila Takeda. And honestly, the Wu Zetian with Theodora, believe it or not, you can trade positive against Attila Takeda with siege units, which is a really good thing for your kingdom, like really good. If you can dispose of your siege units in a way that actually is a pretty moderate rate, you're trading your siege for the enemy's cavalry. Really good, really good. I'm also optimistic, cautiously optimistic, that a Zenobia pairing with Wu Zetian will be good. But I'm cautious because, yes, between the two of them, they are adding a lot of defensive stats. The downside of the Wu Zetian is, you know, look, we're kind of doubling down on healing if we have a Wu Zetian with a Zenobia. I don't love that. Maybe we're overhealing, in fact. I don't love that. But I'll also add that, you know, I'd probably rather pair with an infantry specialist than a generalist, which is what Wu Zetian is. That is why she works so well for defending your city and in a situation where you're pairing with YSS or Theodora. You can bring really whatever type of troop you want. And in Ark of Osiris and for city defense, that is really quite phenomenal. So you can see here on the Wu Zetian, we're getting 20% of stats and also the silence effect. Over here, we're getting 20% damage boost. And we look at a commander like Zenobia, and on this one skill, you're getting 40% of stats and 10% damage dealt to rallied armies, right? Like, pretty nutty. Here, we're getting 15% normal attack damage reduction and a normal attack damage boost. So I'm just pointing out that I think that while Wu Zetian is solid, I do think that she loses a little bit to get all that versatility in terms of raw power. With, again, that one exception of defending your city, where, like, yeah, you've got all the troop types, and this is all upside. Now, just to be really clear when I'm talking about defending your city here and why this is such a big deal, right? Like, we've got Wu Zetian, and let's just take the 10% defense boost. Because that applies to all troops, and your city has all troops in it, that's kind of like getting 10% Archer defense, 10% infantry defense, 10% cavalry defense, and 10% siege unit defense. So in those situations, she profoundly outclasses a commander like Zenobia, who's giving a whole bunch of stats to infantry rather than to everybody. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video, and if you did, let me know down below in the comments who you think some of the best Wu Zetian pairs are, and what her future will be in Rise of Kingdoms, and what her role might ultimately become. I think that she's a pretty solid long-term investment if you care a lot about garrison only. Because she is so versatile, if a new commander comes into the game and they work really well together, guess what? Regardless of what troop type they care about, she'll work with them because she can work with anybody. Don't forget to throw a like on the video and subscribe if you're looking for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos that help you get value and smash your enemies. And until next time, you have fun. Smashing the kingdom.